Wow. Hello, everyone. It is time for the post-match fan interactive show where you send in your reactions to Liverpool games. And uh, if they're good, interesting, whatever, then I'll talk through them live on the show. Uh, we've got the YouTube chat. So if you're a YouTube member uh, or you want to drop a super chat in, please feel free to do that. Uh, over on x.com, uh, there is a uh, post-match tweet where you can put in responses there. And I'll put them in. Or if you're a legend tier subscriber, you've got the Club Legend Discord um, as well. So, yeah, I'll be pulling comments from all over the place. We've got a bunch in here already. Um, let's uh, let's just dive into it because yeah, mad, mad old game of football. I honestly, I, I feel a tightness in my chest. <laughs> and this is I'm like I'm, I'm not a young person anymore. Uh, I need to be careful of this. And Liverpool are giving me issues. Um, but yeah, we're, we're here right now with three points and, and currently uh, top of the league. Um, Stephen Ryder says this is the Christmas period for Champions Dig four and get the three points and move on right now it's working we top for a couple hours at least we go again against the scum next week yeah absolutely fill your boots screenshot the league table enjoy it um for at least a few hours until Arsenal take on Villa you know obviously Villa have got that incredible record at Villa Park uh, they've won 14 I think on the bounce there now it would be a huge stretch for it to be 15 and that's the, the clock said of the week you know the longer those runs go the more likely they are to kind of come to an end um, but you know they've obviously absolutely outplayed Manchester City in the week if they can do the same to Arsenal then yeah Liverpool will go into next week uh, as the league leaders but right now all Liverpool could do was get three points uh, and that's certainly done. Uh, Diane Butler says, I am 40 in February and I've lost count of the number of heart attacks Liverpool have nearly given me. Very happy to get the three points. We go again. Yes, 100%. Um, Veronica, a great goal by Harvey. Congratulations, Mo, on 200 goals for us, the Egyptian king. It had to happen eventually, didn't it? And, you know, this is, these are the things you need. You know, if I, I, was, I did a video on my channel on the midweek. Um, after the City Villa result, I felt compelled to talk about it and ask him whether City are collapsing. And it's not necessarily so much that it's definitely going to be the end of Man City, but if you were going to write a story about a team that wasn't going to succeed, that wasn't going to put down the points tally required, that had problems and they were why the league wasn't won by them, City are starting to rack up those stories, you know, mad deflected goals, dodgy refereeing decisions, injuries to key players, volume of injuries, mistakes made in the transfer market, all those kind of things. And they're all happening to City right now. Um, if you're going to make a story about a team that was going to come through and win the league, that is loads of late wins, um, mad deflected goals, records being broken along the way. They're starting to add up for Liverpool. So Salah getting 200 goals is huge. And it was it was a terrible, terrible way to mark his 200th. But equally, the lads who are sat there on the goal records in the Premier League um, or you know goal records for Liverpool... He scored all kinds of goals and they didn't care. You know, get your goals wherever you get them. Supreme goal scorers, honestly, will not be asked where those goals come from, only that they come. Uh, so, yeah, big one for Mo Salah. And it, it ultimately, it kind of summed up where he's been in the last few weeks for us, not been at his best. Uh, I thought he was much better when we moved him central, by the way, but that's a different thing. Um, Frankie J 75 says, didn't think we were going to bag that one. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I felt like I didn't feel anywhere near as nervous as the sort of... I could have done on the Sheffield United one because we had the goal um, and it was a bit more anxious at the end than it needed to be but that one we just didn't show enough you know there wasn't enough there that suggest it starts to feel like I spent years going no Liverpool can do it Liverpool can do it because they're pulling magic but that was all it was it was magic it wasn't based on like these are really good players and this tried and tested and that was my problem a little bit with this game yeah we've got tried and tested yeah we've got magic but actually you need to see it within the 90 minutes you need to prove that you can rock them that you can get it and create a chance that gives you a lift and it gives you an indication that more can happen and we didn't do that until ultimately we really Really needed to and by the time the game comes to an end I know Alisson makes a late save but we actually had more that we got into some really we did get into dangerous positions okay 10 men again who cares um uh, official cam LFC says Nunes is just having a bad spell it's been amazing for us this season internationally he just needs to find a rhythm again he's always going to be dangerous yeah I mean look Gakpo wasn't great when he, he started in the midweek um so as much as I actually thought both of these games were Gapo games, but we're trying to rotate the squad. We're trying to keep ourselves as fresh as possible because we're not just fighting for this this game, this game week and next one. We're fighting for an entire season. And actually, 
quite possibly beyond because we went all in on the quadruple challenging season on the cup double winning season and we had nothing left in the tank and that was how some of our young players were done in there as well so you know this we're trying to build a team not just for this season but for next season and the season after that for the remainder of cops years and hopefully for for, for more beyond that too um so yeah, you know we do need to rotate. We need to keep fresh. But Darwin's in an unfortunate position where I don't think either of those games suited his skill set. I think like the Man United and Arsenal games absolutely will suit him down to the ground. Um, but will he be in the right kind of form to impact them? Let's let's hope so. Um, Kieran Orr says uh, that'll do. Ultimately, uh, results define the narrative and all that. Didn't realise if Mo had missed, we would have had a pen for a challenge on Kurt anyway. Oh well, that's that's good. Well, it's good to know anyway. It takes the pressure off that way. Uh, up the Reds. Uh, yeah, absolutely indeed, my friend. Um, thanks everyone by the way who's putting the comments in. I'll get through as many as I can. Uh, GS. Um, today's lemonade was Sprite, but don't worry. Next Premier League game, we've got seven up. Um, Dave, uh, we won 18 points after being a goal down this season. Mentality monsters again. Yeah, I mean, I'd like that mentality to stretch to just comprehensively winning football matches without having to concede that goal. That would be great. More of them, please. But yeah, um, definitely. Uh, the Brit Sniper, uh, poor performance, but it's all about getting three points no matter what. That's how you win titles. We keep going up the mighty reds. And Dave again. Uh, though for the sake of my heart, I'd like us to win a bit more easily. Yes, absolutely, Dave. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. Uh, Iggy Sobberslai looks like he needs a proper rest. Yes. Yeah, and look, Harvey Elliott's there and, and banging on the door. Um and uh, there's not too much more he can do from his overall performances. But I also know that Harvey's been a brilliant substitute for us. And sometimes you need that 12th or 13th man. You know, when we won the league, it was Oxlade Chamberlain was our 12th man. Uh, as a, a really, really sort of pivotal tell and roll in that side, but not a celebrated one. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, big fella with the super chat says hi Paul uh, players like strangers in the first half we won that's the main thing yeah they were it was disjointed but again it was another t side where they made it difficult for us to play through they didn't give space and, and then what you need is a bit of bravery but as we see it's a fine line because you can go a little bit too far the door gets left open and you're in trouble and that's where their chance comes from is us just being a little over committed and then you're racing back we have both full backs high up the pitch so Trent and Costas back you know out of position and um, that really very nearly uh, was, 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 was damaging for us um, but yeah again no one ever really remember you only remember these wins when they come in the last like sort of 10 games of the season Chris said it I mean I probably won't forget this because of the damage I've done to my aorta um, <laughs> watching this um, but yeah uh, when we won the league we won a lot of mad 2-1s and very narrow games in fact I remember vividly Crystal Palace being one of them and Sheffield United funnily enough being one of them in, the, in those runs uh, we had you know tough hard foot wins away at Bournemouth in that spell Hopefully we look back on this period as the grind that got us the points that we needed to put together a title challenge. Uh, right, I'm going to come back to the YouTube comments momentarily. Uh, I'll just have a quick check uh, over on um, Discord. Uh, we got one here. Uh, from Milesy, um, another win from behind, really showing how strong this team is. It wasn't pretty by any stretch, and the red card helped, but there's never say die attitude we have as a massive improvement from last year where we gave up too easily. Exactly, and that's the important thing. Is so I think... You, you do it once or twice, then it, this, is, this is circumstantial what I'm about to say here, but I'll go with a positive take on it. If you, could, if you get the occasional isolated ones, but you're constantly going first, get, first go down, teams think they can get stuff at you. And, but what, what we're building now is this notion of teams thinking, oh God, this is going to be 100 minutes of football and we're probably going to lose it in stoppage time. Oh, God, I'm so tired. Oh, God, Liverpool are coming and Liverpool are eventually going to break us down. We're going to start to instill this notion in teams that we can't be beaten and we'll go deep and we will. you're going to have to have legs that you don't have <laughs> uh, to be able to stop us. So actually, yeah, and that's mentality monsters, isn't it? That's kind of what I'm talking about is you're building up an aura. What I'd like Liverpool to build up is the aura of you can't even lay a glove on us, so don't bother. Um, but re in realistic terms... I'll take, I'll take whatever you need, some kind of aura. And if it's one that causes teams to psychologically give up the ghost in injury time, then that's just fine by me, to be honest. Um, yeah, here's another one uh, by uh, G Barry. Barry K, I apologise. The, the 
the view on my screen is horrendous of this, but on the screen I can just about read it, and maybe I need glasses. Uh, he, I'd be sending the under-12s to USG, two massive home games incoming. Yeah, that will be an interesting side that we select for this one, but again, in terms of rhythm, I think we'll do what we've been doing. You know, I, like, I think I think Doak will start the game again, then Quansett will start it again. We'll have an interesting... I think, but I think maybe it's like a shade weaker, so McConnell, you know, one of those kind of lads maybe not McConnell but maybe like Luke Chambers in fact almost certainly Luke Chambers will start left back um, it's an interesting decision in terms of what we do because how fit Alexis McAllister and do you want to just play Trent in midfield now you know Gomez is brilliant again at right back I think he's been sensational there all season so far Um yeah, and actually, this kind of this is the point expanded on here by um, by King Mason. Uh, it'd be interesting to see Trent start in DM and Gomez right back. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. It is a good question, and again, to our star boy, um, Barry also saying how much does Harvey love playing for Liverpool? I love that boy. So um, Alfie Brown, stand-up comic, was on Thursday Night Pint last season, and he was saying like you know for for, for scousers seeing. Trent and seeing Curtis and obviously Jamie and uh, and Stevie and Robbie and all those in, in the past really means more seeing a local lad in a, in the local side. But for those who weren't born and bred in Liverpool, Harvey Elliott's that. There's a lad from London who just loves Liverpool Football Club, Liverpool fan to the core. So actually, he you know a lot of people see a lot in Harvey Elliott. Um, I just think it's great. I just love people who, who love Liverpool, playing for Liverpool and making a success of it. I think he's absolutely special. Um, and yeah, big important goal for us there. Right, let's go to uh, Twitter, slash x.com. Um, right, we have got uh, one here from Jake Hanna, uh, who says, was a frustrating first half, but we pulled it back. I know there are questions about whether it's sustainable to keep on performing. Getting wins of the death, the important thing is the three points, 100%, mate. Uh, Matthew Stewart says, uh, love the result, but we desperately need to improve these away performances. It's taken worldly goals and alley saves to help us escape recently. Still, top of the table is currently fantastic. Yeah, and I agree. And I think there's a thing that comes with the second half of the season, by the way, where we tend to get better in the second half of campaigns. Look, again, this is still a side learning each other, how each other plays, what's expected of them. Gravenberg and Soberslai, to, I mean, fuck, fuck, our, mid, our start, start on midfield three all joined the club in the summer and only two of them, only one of them actually had the proper pre-season. Endo and, and, and Gravenberg came in without without doing the, all the foundational work the club puts in in a pre-season. So, yeah, you know, it's a brand new midfield. We then move Trent into it, who's new to that role. Uh, and, you know, so... That'll just come. The players will understand better. What we've got right now is yeah, that fighting spirit. Because you can't... You, that Klopp said it in his pre-match press conference. Like, that, they're really good signs. The, the team are kind of almost ahead of schedule because of the difficulties they've faced. They could have, like, cowered. And new teams do that a lot. They crumble because they haven't got a collectivism. They haven't got the right attitude. Shows to me we've bought the right players. Not even just technically, but from a, from a, from a head standpoint as much as anything else um, so yeah we do need to improve how we play but also the thing is you'll play some of these teams in a, in February and March and that, that, that's it you know, they've got, they haven't really got much in the tank they'll either be safe or they'll be so down in the dumps that they'll have nothing left to fight for and injuries will have really bitten and all that kind of stuff there's a different landscape later on in the season um, but great, good comment Matthew thank you um, Kenny Ross Says uh, Harvey is some player, deserves to start some games in this busy period coming up, but wouldn't even complain if he's coming off the bench uh, for all of them because he changes games when he does. I 100% agree with that. I think he's earned the right. I think Sobo needs a rest. Um, we need to put some minutes back in his legs for the big games coming up. thing is, Harvey will probably... Do you just start Harvey against USG or is there someone else in there? It's a real pity Bobby Clark's been injured all season because like, he would have actually got, got a little bit of a look in. And, you know, that's a game where you could do that, where you could have brought Bobby Clark in and left Harvey to, to then start uh, Man United at the weekend. But we'll have to see. Um, Philip Co uh, Coles says, uh, cannot afford that performance against United or Arsenal, but we won. That will just about do. VVD and Ali the difference. Yeah, VVD, Ali, Harvey, Gomez, Salah, you know. That's a lot of players to be the difference, um, but you know you buy good players for for a reason because you have to have different ways of winning football matches. So yeah, Allison back in the team. This is the thing. City have just 
we're just without Rodri and they haven't been, they haven't like won a game when Rodri's not playing for them in the league. Kevin De Bruyne is out, they've managed to make it work, but then when they lose Doku and Grealish, it starts to it starts to bite. We've we've you need a bit of luck with injuries. And it, that could have been that could have gone horrendously for us when Keller has gone in. Your backup goalie could have caused real issues. It was a little bit sticky at times, but we've managed to get through. And hopefully now Allison can just stay fit because yeah, he's a huge different difference maker. But what I would say is when world class players win football matches for you, that's why you own world class players. That's why you pay world class wages on top of world class transfer fees because they make it make a difference for you, don't they, uh, Dan? Uh, Dan says, who I've commented, I've just completely skipped by. I entirely apologise. I will get Dan's co comments up any moment now. Um, yes, bear with me. Sorry, Dan's been, been, been favourite in tweets and it's totally offset what I'm doing here. Fuck's sake. Right. Dan, stop liking things. Um, uh, come on, where are you? Kenny Ross, we've done Kenny Ross. Come on, Paul. Phil Coles, yeah, we've done you. And Dan, right, super. Klopp sub, save us again. Uh, his biggest weakness has become our greatest strength, winning when playing badly, sign of champions. Yeah, look, he's had to... Look, I think we've got a better squad than we've ever had before, I really do. Um, just in terms of quality of depth and the, and the young players in there as well. And the balance, the age balance is great. We've got some t super talented young players. We've got world-class older players. And we've got some stars potentially in there, right in the prime as well. Fabulous balance of the squad. Um, but yeah, you know, Klopp's having to, it's had to adapt. And it, I think it's easier to adapt, not just running 12 players into the ground when you've got 16 or 17 lads who are good enough to come in. So yeah, a, a nice a nice marriage there between Liverpool changing their approach. Obviously, the, 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 you know, Liverpool spending the money on the squad as opposed to just on a, on a small number of players. Really good stuff. Uh, Ziggy saying, um, City playing poorly and dropping points. Us playing poorly and getting the points. Important. Uh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely that. Um and Barry slash Leon Graham, as much as I hate the early kickoff, when you get three points, it makes the rest of the weekend a much more pleasant place and relax. Yes. Um, totally, mate. Totally and utterly agree on that. Uh, right, let's get back for a few more uh, YouTube comments. Uh, Al Jabri, uh, get in there, Harvey. Yes, the pen was a joke, absolute joke. Even the first half pen, the way the referee spent two minutes to look at it. Uh, did we get that with Curtis and Lucho at Spurs? No joke. Uh, Gomez was boss, says Klopp's cop. And Harvey deserves to start on Sunday. Yep. LJC 15, early doors, but six points with two iffy away performances. Starting to believe Reds. Yeah. Absolutely, and we're not even early doors. It's um, we're we're over a third of the way into the season now, right? You know, we're we're well into the campaign. This is the tough period. This is where it, it seasons come undone. I said this during commentary. There's always a three or four horse race going into December in the Premier League, apart from when Liverpool pissed it. Almost always there's three teams and then four who, who they can just put a couple of games together. They'll be right in there, and then by the time. The end of December's done. It's two. It's two. That's that's what happens. So and again, Spurs were right in there a month ago, and now they're just not. Now they're a team who, if they have a good run, they'll, they'll finish fourth. But realistically, they're fighting for European places. Liverpool are a bad, or a couple of bad results. That you know, that Sheffield United game could have been one. Fulham could have been one. Sheffield United could have been one. And this could have been one. And all of a sudden, instead of nine points, you're coming out with three or you know four or five points and it makes a huge difference you know we would be very much in a fight for third and fourth if we'd not managed to scrape through this and um, so it is it's very important um uh let's see what else we've got here um fish says gomez right back trent midfield or treat midfield if you will uh Iggy says, uh, by the way, this is a question for every Scouser in this chat. Where do you guys go to drink before matches? I'll be at Anfield versus Man United for the first time, so I'd like to get the whole experience. Everyone's got their own thing. Everyone will tell you that their pub is the best pub to go to. Um, I, I, you know what? Have a half in all of them. <laughs> go start, go like clockwise around the ground, start in the Arkles and work your way all the way around to like the King Addy or whatever. Uh, enjoy it. Make a day of it, mate. Um, Bournemouth are 1-0 up as well, apparently. Um, go ahead, that's a, that's a thing, let me have a little look at that one. Um, I mean, not that I ultimately care a great deal about that, but yeah. Um, let me quickly get, let me quickly get at that, because it's always, always weird to end. Oh yeah, wow, Bournemouth are beating Manchester United. 
Dominic Solanke with the goal. Funny, funny, funny. Um, okay, right, we're going to wrap that up there. Uh, I'm going to be doing player rankings next, so I need your help for that one, so stay tuned on YouTube. If you want more content, then head over to redmenplus.com. I can show you right now on the screen, uh, I believe, Amber. Ah, she screams. Um, there, there we go. Uh, right now, live on redmanplus.com Chris and Dan are doing the player ratings podcast top of the league it's called uh, there's loads of stuff on there as well the instant match reaction will follow that one as well so yeah two back to back extra podcast and video streams if you want to head over to redmanplus.com and I have to say this if you want to fill your boots um, with a Liverpool themed Christmas sweatshirt just like me Trent one um, you've got five more days left of guaranteed Christmas delivery over on redmondmerch.com. So go and fill your boots with one of them. Uh, there's a wide selection on there. It's something to suit every taste, whether you're looking for ugly or you're looking for classy uh, in terms of Christmas jumpers or sweatshirts. Yeah, we've got you covered. So yeah, head to redmondmerch.com. And if you're in the UK, last few days to make sure you get guaranteed Christmas delivery. Right? Thank you so much for that. hope you have a wonderful afternoon and rest of your weekend's football. Because right now, Liverpool are top of the league. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots.